So I'm going to show you how to do what seems to be the holy grail of iPad GarageBand musicians, which is I'm going to show you how to export the original GarageBand project source files, the AIF files, of the individual stems of tracks, mono and stereo, depending on the instrument. And I'm going to use this iFiles program on my jailbroken iPad 1 to import the files into Windows, my operating system, and then into Cubase. So I have the um, program open in my VNC viewer. You would be able to do this directly on your iPad. I'm using the VNC viewer so I can uh, screen capture my iPad at the same time as make this video. And I've actually made a bookmark because it wasn't that easy to find. Um, as you can see here, it's under VAR Mobile Applications. And then I click on GarageBand. I go into Documents. Nope, you see it's not that easy. Uh, Library application support then documents and here are my GarageBand project files including the backups and I've gone into my Dylan cover that I've been working on and I looked around and at first I actually thought it was these media files but I imported the whole thing into Cubase and once I did so it says freeze files no sync but for whatever reason, these are actually synced files. It exports them from beginning to end up until the last moment in the track where it's being recorded. And the stem that you will see will have the synced up beats. Uh, in this case, I'm at 73 beats per minute. And when I set Cubase to 73 BPM, all the tracks lined up to my surprise without any fuss or muss. They included the reverb and what have you, so if you're going to export um, tracks and you wish to import, use reverb in your DAW, then you would not put reverb on your tracks. So here are the files, and what you do in iFiles, which you get off Cydia, is that you um, navigate to the folder, and then you select folder that you wish. You select your folder. There's my project folder. And I guess it was this here. And that's it. You create a zip file, which I did already, so I'm not going to do it again. But it'll create it in this folder, in the documents folder. Once it's done, it takes a few minutes of the selected folder it'll create that uh, zip file. So I cancel that. It'll show up at the bottom of the folder view. And then what you do is you finish done. At the bottom, you start the iFile server, the web server. And it gives you the address, as you can see here. This is a local address. I used this first one, though you could easily use the IP address itself and then you navigate to your browser in this case Chrome and I am refreshing the browser and this will give you the folder view oh, I'm going into VAR and then it was under mobile applications and you could see the names of the applications. I've gone into GarageBand and Documents. Oh, that's the mistake I made before again. <laughs> uh, library. You'll have to use your pause button and go back and forward. <clears throat> it's still loading. Still loading. Application support. Documents again. 
and here's my project folder and this is where my zip file was and then I simply right click on the zip file which would be in this folder view and downloaded it to my desktop and once on my desktop here's the folder I was able to as I said import it into Cubase I, um, there it is, this is a capture I made before uh, I took that, imported it using the server and from there I unzipped it into my project folder for Cubase and then I opened Cubase and what I saw was the project files which were as you can see all synced up from start to finish I set my BPM to 73 and there you have it all the individual tracks as you can see the mono tracks are mono the organ for whatever reason is stereo I guess all the virtual instruments turned out to be stereo that's fine it works and uh, I'm now able to edit the individual original tracks from GarageBand and you can do the same thing using iFiles found in the Cydia, um, Cydia program. There you have it.